So, the Music Modernization Act just passed the Senate, which means it's just a couple of steps from becoming the law. But what is it, and what does it mean for songwriters? We're going to break it down. What's up, guys? It's Brandon here from KDMR Music, teaching you how to succeed in the music business. Now, if you're new to this channel, I do videos all the time about music marketing, strategy points, and videos breaking down the news, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So something that's been dominating the news cycle lately from a music perspective is the Music Modernization Act. Now it's a bill that just passed the Senate, so it's about to become the law, assuming it does pass the House and get signed by the President, which it shouldn't. There shouldn't be any problems because they've all expressed support for it before. But we've got to break down what the Music Modernization Act is. Now, broad strokes overview is just that it's going to overhaul the way you get royalties as a songwriter from big streaming providers such as Pandora and Sound Exchange. Now, in order for you to understand the changes to the act, I've got to let you know exactly how things work now. So, as it stands, the Music Modernization Act is a combination of three different bills that have hit the house. So, the first of those is called the Classics Act, which right now, under current law, Copyrighted recordings um, from 1972 and before basically fall into fair use or public domain. And so radio stations and other um, service providers that use that music are not required to pay certain royalties on it. So what the Classics Act does is establish protections for those recordings and for those legacy artists so that they can get paid when their music is used just like a newer artist would. So that's the first part of the bill. Now the second part of the bill is the more common Music Modernization Act as it started. So the Music Modernization Act, just that individual piece of the bill, is something that really overhauls the way we receive mechanical licensing um, from streaming providers. Now, basically the way to break this down is that when you have a song and it's played, there are two different copyrights that are maintained. There's a copyright for the sound recording, which is, you know, the actual sound file that you hear. And there's a copyright for the song as it was written by the songwriters and the producers. So, as it stands right now, when you have to get that mechanical royalty, which is the royalty that's paid to the publisher of the song and the songwriter when that song is used, whether it's from the, uh, one sound recording or another, those royalties are actually collected and distributed by a third party, which is called the Harry Fox Agency. And the problem with that is that when the Harry Fox Agency basically runs based on who supplies them data, which it has to be the artist or the label, and a lot of times that data is incomplete. And so when that data is incomplete, the royalties are never paid out. And when those royalties aren't paid out, they end up being absorbed by the Harry Fox Agency and companies like it. So there are a lot of these unclaimed royalties that are going to these outside entities and not going to the songwriters who actually wrote the songs. So the Music Modernization Act portion of the bill establishes something that's called the Mechanical Licensing Collective. And now this is going to be paid for by the streaming services, by Pandora, by all of the entities that use it the most. But what it does is it establishes one database where all the songwriter information is supposed to live. And so this is going to make it easier for royalties to be paid and the artists and songwriters to be located to get those royalty payments. Now, this Mechanical Licensing Collective is also going to take the place of organizations like the Harry Fox Agency, and they're actually going to be the ones that collect and distribute these royalty payments. And perhaps the biggest change from all this is that when there are royalties that are unclaimed or a songwriter that can't be found, instead of the, the unclaimed royalties going back to that agency or that uh, separate third party, now those royalties are just going to be split among the songwriters that we could they could find. So, overall, this is going to help songwriters get paid more when their music is streamed. 
So that's one part of it. Now, another thing that the Music Modernization Act does is it helps to streamline the process or make it easier for performance rights organizations to argue for higher royalty rates. Right now, there are laws on the books that ban um, these organizations from considering the sound recording royalty rate as being comparable when they're setting the mechanical royalty rates or the streaming royalty rates. So what the Music Modernization Act does is it allows them to now consider what's called the fair market value based on a number of external factors including the sound recording royalty to establish what the royalty should be whenever your song is streamed. Now this isn't just talking about the payout that you get from somewhere like Spotify through your um, distributor like TuneCore or DistroKid. This is actually a separate royalty that is supposed to be paid to the songwriters every time a song is played. So this is going to be really important. It's going to help you get more money that you've been missing out on and it's going to make it easier for you to get that money. So that's really the big nuts and bolts. But then there's also another portion of the Music Modernization Act and that is called the AMP Act. Now the AMP Act basically makes formal something that sound exchange has already been doing on under sound exchange which pays you for all the non-interactive streaming so things like pandora or youtube music things where you can't pick out what song is going to be played before it's played um, spotify the non-premium version things like that um, basically sound exchange administers the royalties for those services and what sound exchange has done in the past is allowed artists to give the producer and the mixing engineer a percentage of those royalties those sound recording royalties to be paid whenever the songs are streamed and so the music modernization act or the amp act portion of that act makes that practice legal and basically establishes it as the precedent so that whenever any other organization comes along producers and engineers are allowed to get paid those royalties as well this is important because it's the first time that recording engineers and mixing engineers have been mentioned specifically in copyright law so I hope I didn't go too deep for you but basically the Music Modernization Act is a very important piece of legislation um, that has been years and years perhaps even decades in the making and it's going to really bring into the 21st century our practices for paying songwriters. I mean some of these laws that are in place right now have been in place since way back in 1909 and that's way before any of the technology was invented to even help people you know get music and stream music and things like that so to make it simple the music modernization act makes how we get paid line up with the technology that exists right now hopefully you understand a lot more about the act if you have any questions for me leave them in the comments below i'd love to hear from you until next time peace <laughs>